All right, for the uh, first part of today's live stream, it's just me, no heathen dog today. So we are going to talk about attribute enhancements and limiters. So things that you can do to improve your attributes and things that you can do to limit your attributes in order to give yourself more points or to define your character in a way that you prefer. Now, I know we talked about some of that last week. But now we're going to dive into many more specifics and we're going to read through the book and see what it says about them in much greater detail. So let's do that right now. Actually, before I do that, please like, subscribe and share for more Absolute Power or other games. Next year, we're going we're going to be talking about a lot of old games next year. Various different things. We got Earth Dawn. We've got Shadow Run. We've got uh, two different versions of Dungeons and Dragons. We've got Alternity, the real edition, not the current one. And uh, there's one more in there. Oh, Star Wars D6. So those are the plans for next year. So I'm already booked up for next year, just saying. <laughs> so uh, so we've got a lot of things that, that we're planning on for next year. But uh, for this year, we're talking about Absolute Power. Or if there's another game that maybe you like, maybe you missed it when we covered it in the past, go check out our catalog. We have tons of games in there that we either read through or done overviews of. And of course, we have an entire Palladium <laughs> catalog of many, many Palladium games. By the way, for the Palladium Purists out there in my Christmas package, I got first edition Palladium Fantasy. So I know there's going to be some people happy about that. So I do plan on reading that and seeing what all the hype is. Seeing what all the hype is. All right, let's uh, now present, share screen. Boom, boom. No, tab, dum dum. Uh, why is it not showing up in a tab? That's freaking awesome. I have to do it that way. That sucks. Okay, there we go. Um, make that full screen there. All right, so we are going to be looking. Was it chapter six today? Chapter six, as we talk about attribute customization. So, doo -doo -doo. zoom in on this, and it is going to be a bit difficult for me to read chat. I will get to it at the end of the segment, or if I see a super chat pop in, I'm not ignoring you, but I have. It's just me. So. Uh, all right, attribute customization. As you design your character, you may find that some attributes don't function exactly the way you envision them. Perhaps they're too limited in scope, not offering enough options or alternatives, or maybe they're too broad and need to be scaled back. Remember, we talked last week about the whole wide versus deep, right? So let's say you have something that's a level three power, but you want it to have a greater scope. You... You're pulling it wider, but if you pull it wider, you're making it shallower, which means it's effectively going to have less power, but it can do more things. But then you can scrunch it and be like, no, no, I want this thing I, in one environment. I want it to be the perfect power ever. Okay, well, then you start adding limiters on it, and you're squishing it this way, and now it goes deep. Now it acts much more powerful, but only in very limited circumstances. So that's the difference between the two. And you can mix and match how you want to do that through these enhancements and limiters. Uh, so absolute power attributes are easy to customize using enhancements and limiters to empower or dampen an attribute's effect. You may have already assigned some attribute specific customizations detailed in chapter five, particularly for the weapon attribute, for which there are many options. But there are also enhancements and limiters described in this chapter of broader application across a wide range range of attributes. Changing the way attributes function from their baseline abilities can have unintended consequences on the game, and therefore adding additional enhancements and limiters is only allowed with your Game Master's approval. I, I say everything in the game is only allowed by your Game Master's approval, but, but I get the point here. Um, remember, attributes in this game are... My throat is already going scratchy. This is awesome. There are attributes in this game is a general term. It's not like some other games where it's your core capabilities. In this game, those are stats. Attributes are your skills, your talents, your superpowers, all the little things that your character can do outside of the core uh, body, mind, and soul stats. So just remember that I, I, it always throws me off. I have to like double think on it every time because I'm not used to the term being used in that way. But just putting that out there for you. Just remember, attributes are all the little extraneous stuff that you can do. Your weapon fighting skills, your skill, I'm sorry, your skill groups, your superpowers, etc., etc. Alright, effective le attribute level. As mentioned briefly at the beginning of this chapter, adding an enhancement or limiter to an attribute does not 
change the character point cost, but it does decrease or increase the effective functioning level of the attribute by one level for each assignment. Again, we've already covered this, but I'm going to do this again. I think it's important. An enhancement decreases its level. Now, that's that's not intuitive, right? But it does make sense if you think about it. An enhancement makes you go wide. You're enhancing it widthwise. So that's going to decrease its its over its its strength, we'll call it, right? Because you can do more, its actual power level is coming down a little bit. But you can do more with it at that lower power level. A limiter increases the level because you're squishing it this way, and it's getting deeper. It's getting longer. It's like making a sword. So as you as you're limiting it. You're containing it more, it gets longer, it gets it gets more powerful, the level goes higher. The character point cost is the same. So if it's like a, a, a level 4 ability, and you add a limiter to it, it's 4, and in parentheses 5, because it costs 4. It's a, it treat, treat it as a, a level 4 ability until you use it, then it acts as a level 5 ability because it's got that limiter on it. I hope I'm saying that in English because I'm visualizing it here. I just hope I'm, I'm getting it across to you. All right. Uh, all right. So with the exception of the circumstances detailed under weapon attribute, additional enhancements cannot be added if the effective level of the attribute would drop below one. Yeah, if you have a zero effective level, that means you're doing nothing. I can teleport zero distance. Okay. <laughs> right? I can do zero damage. Uh-huh. What good is that for, right? So I can fly at zero speed. So yeah, obviously you you can't bring your attribute down to zero. If, but but I'm paying sixteen points for it because it's at level four. Eh, yeah, but you brought it down to zero because you added all these enhancements to it. So you can fly in the water. You can fly in space. You can fly with no wings. You can fly. I, mean, I don't know what they'd be, but you get the idea. But you can't fly anywhere now because you've literally taken it down to nothing. So, reversed modifiers for defects. Enhancements and limiters normally only apply to attributes. Gaming groups that enjoy pushing the boundaries of what is possible in game systems may consider the possibility of reversing these modifiers and applying them to defects as well. And we'll talk about defects in the next video. That is, the enhancements act as limiters and increase the defects effective functioning baseline by one assignment. I don't fully, I mean, I think theoretically I understand what that means, but using the terms there, I don't think I get that off the cuff, but hopefully in the next video, we can look back at this and say, oh, that's what that means, okay? Conversely, limiters act as enhancements and decrease the defects effective functioning by one assignment. So enhancements, so enhancements, <laughs> I can't use this word because it's used elsewhere. I was gonna say enhancements limit the defect. <laughs> Limits enhance the defect. <laughs> God. Um, I think you guys get what I mean here. So I used to have this thing. So I'm going to talk real world for a moment. Um, when I worked for DISA, I used to have to uh, train people on certain aspects of, of red and black. And depending on who you're talking to, red and black means different things. If you talk to me because of my background, red means classified. Black means unclassified. If you talk to somebody on the tech control side that works on hardware, it's the opposite. Red means unclassified. Black means classified. Why? Because to them, red means danger. It's the red side. And it literally will say on certain encryption devices, red side. That's the danger side. That's the unencrypted side. That's the stuff that can be tapped into. So uh, you be careful with what you put out there. Where on our side of it, we see like classification level secret being red because we got red stickers, got red backgrounds, it's got red borders, it's got red over, you know. So it was hard to teach because there'd be some people like me be like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean black side? Black sides, we gotta be careful. That. Like, no. <laughs> so I had a little blurb on the bottom that said uh black data passes or how'd I say this? Black data passes through the red side. And red data passes through the black side or something like that. Very similar to that. Well, I, I feel like I got to have the same kind of disclaimer on, on what we're reading here. So, uh, yeah, and, and it, it was it was fun because you'd have 
almost 50 50 half the people agree with me and half the people hate me uh in terms of my use of red and black and then of course up from the tech control side you know half of us would hate hate them and you know their half would be like no this is the right way it's just interesting and like i said i really feel like that's kind of what's going on here so uh so not every modifier is appropriate for every defect, of course, and so groups must consider each situation carefully. For example, one assignment of the area limiter to the four-point moderate-ism defect. Okay, so ism defect, I'm guessing that means you have... I hope it's not racism. <laughs> Maybe it is, uh, but we'll see. I don't know what the ism defect is. Could indicate, oh, okay, so it is. It literally is. Okay, could indicate that the discrimination the character re receives also impacts nearby allies. Okay, so you put an area limiter on the discrimination. So the, we'll call it the racism for uh, to make it easier. Defect could indicate the discrimination the character receives also impacts nearby allies. Oh, you hung out. You hung out with that horned tiefling with tails? You can't be trusted. All right. In a three meter radius, this limiter decreases the defect from a four point moderate to a two point slight. So the racism would be lessened on the person, but it would be extended out. So, okay, now people aren't trying to, to lynch the tiefling. Now people are just mm, shaking fingers at uh, we don't like your kind around here, but we also don't like your kind for supporting her kind, you know. So, so I get it. Another example, adding a delay enhancement to the mark defect could indicate a mark that appears after a certain period of time, and thus is more obvious once it finally manifests, from easy to difficult to conceal. All right. Oh, uh, we'll skip that. We'll move over. All right, let's look at these enhancements. The four standard enhancements described here in area, duration, range, and targets offer creative ways to make your attributes unique and function differently from those of other characters. And this is the perfect, perfect, perfect reason to have these type of enhancements. So two characters can have the same basic power, but they work completely differently. You know, in Champions, it was what range killing, and I had such a hard time with this. It's funny because I cannot explain how I was thinking back then when I was doing Champions because it makes total sense to me, and it has for many years. But back then, I could not get it through my thick skull that a gun is a range killing attack, a fireball is a range killing attack, spitting acid on somebody's a range killing attack in my mind no those are three a gun is a gun a fireball is a fire <laughs> you know it was weird how i i couldn't get that and you know it, champions has a similar system to this right where you put uh, i don't know if they're called enhancements limbers i forget what they're called but uh those powers can have effects so my fireball might be negated by water where a bullet isn't but a bullet might have a limited capacity I think charges is what it's called in Champions, if I remember correctly. You get the point. So we can have the same overall, let's just say it's the same level, the same level three, 30 points of damage power, but yours is a gun, mine is a fireball, his is, you know, face hugger acid. But they're completely different attacks because of the enhancements and limiters that you put on them. So, um, so not every attribute can have all four of these enhancements assigned to them, however, and some attributes cannot take any enhancements at all. Even if a particular enhancement can be assigned to an attribute, give serious consideration to the story and game balance. Screw the story, but game balance. If you plan to make more than one or two assignments of an enhancement. I, I would, personally, I get what he's saying here. I would just change the word story with setting. That That's really the, the only difference I would make. Make sure it fits the setting the, the you're trying to portray there. Uh, the fifth standard enhancement, potent helps offset an attribute with so many limiters that it functions at a level higher than what best fits the player's specific vision, or again, possibly your setting. If the effect of an attribute already exceeds one assignment of enhancement, you'll need to assign the enhancement enough times to, to improve the attribute's function, or there will be no effective change. For example, 
The baseline sixth sense attribute already functions within a 10 meter proximity to the character, equivalent to two assignments of the area enhancement. To improve this attribute further to widen the area, you must make a minimum of three assignments of the area enhancement to extend its effectiveness to 100 meters. Okay, so you can't just throw in one enhancement on there and say, great, it's 100 meters now. No. It already does 10. You actually have to apply it three times to get it to that point. Kind of find that a little suspect because, you know, if it's already built into the power, eh, whatever. Okay. You know, I'm not going to argue, but it makes sense to me in terms of like, hey, to keep things consistent. But <laughs> My deal would be like, okay, then you have six cents, but it only works in your immediate area until you add more enhancements on it. But to some people, that probably, be like, well, that's dumb. Why would I ever take it? If I have to take it with an enhancement, that seems dumb. So I kind of see both arguments on that. Um, just remember, though, that you'd have to apply it three times before you actually get the bonus. The first two are just not wastes of money or, or wastes of points. They're just, you got to build up to that part. Uh, note that characters can typically use the attribute enhancements at less than their maximum effectiveness, anywhere up to the assignment value, even if the attribute also has the maximum limiter. And they've got an example here, which I will put on the screen, and you can pause the video and read that to get more clarification if you want. But we are going to move on to the next paragraph. Okay. Bottom of the screen there, boom. Area. Area defines the radius of influence of the attribute area of effect radius of influence blast radius whatever you want to call it which is usually centered on the character if the area enhancement is not assigned to an attribute it usually means the attribute can affect only a single individual person or object if area is assigned to the weapon attribute the attacking character only makes one attack roll but everyone in the area of effect makes his own defense roll so if you a grenade is a perfect example. It's you throw the grenade, that's going to have an area of attack on it, right? It goes boom. You only make one roll to throw it out there, but all the characters uh, affected by it are going to make the defense roll. Now, furthermore, the GM may decide that a successful defense roll is not enough to escape the attack completely if there's no nearby cover to move behind that would completely block the effects of the attribute instead of negating the area weapon effect completely a successful defense roll reduces the damage by half the gm may alternatively decide that a second opportunity a successful body stat roll with an appropriate target number allows an individual to avoid such damage completely and i get that i think that makes sense sometimes you're like i don't know how you rolled to not take any damage when the grenade landed at your foot but okay and that it's it meant to avoid situations like that Zero assignments, that means you don't have the limiter at all, or sorry, enhancement at all. So no area enhancement on this means it affects a single individual person. If you sign it one time, it affects a small area within quick reach. So about three meter radius or oh, three meter radius. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a uh, six meter diameter. Okay. Uh, two assignments affects a moderate area within a short sprinting distance. Let's see. What's the highest one? Eleven. Okay, well, it says previous times 10, so let's go 10. Affects a lunar distance size area, 1 million kilometer radius, the space between a planet and its moons. There you go. Hopefully you have enough points to add that on there. So it's only in character creation you're wrong that, uh, that all this math plays out. It's Again, it's just like champions, and to be fair, if you don't like champions, I get it. Uh, well, the benef the drawback and benefit of these types of games is you get to, or are, first, is you get to make the character you want through the number of points that you're given. So if you're given 200 points, within that 200-point construct, you literally can make the character you want. That's the benefit. The drawback is, yes, math. I would say this game has less math than Champions, but they both have the math involved. Uh, the flip side of it, you got games like uh, uh, the face rips of uh, Marvel superheroes, where your powers are just there, go. Very open-ended, very simple, but it's a little more difficult to make the character that you exactly want to make. So it's a little trade-off there. Uh, so, let's move over. 
And you can see the enhancements here. So certain attributes can take certain uh, only, can only take certain attributes. It's like telekinesis can only take area and range. Well, telepathy can also have targets. Oh, I can't have uh, telekinesis that has duration. Oh, who? All right, talking about duration. Let's move on to it. So, do we? Uh, nope. So we started with area. Now we're in duration, and then we'll hit range and targets. Duration determines the maximum period of time that the attributes effect will influence a target. Requires no concentration to maintain after it's activated. So once you do it, if it is so, let's just say you have a duration of one minute. You do the power, it's going to last for a minute whether you concentrate on it or not. Most attributes indicate in the description how long it operates normally. Adding the duration enhancement will increase this time. Duration does not usually apply when using the attribute when affecting himself. What? Duration does not usually apply when using the attribute affecting himself since the character can simply reactivate the attribute at will. I would have wrote that sentence a little differently, but okay, I get it. At the end of an attribute's duration, its effects will cease. In circumstances where an attribute's effects should be permanent, 10 assignments of duration can be applied with the GM's permission. So 10 assignments is a thousand years, which can be considered permanent. Can it though? If a mummy... How would you have an ancient Egyptian mummy still alive? I don't know. It just popped in my head. It's probably a dumb analogy, but... All right, duration and weapons. If duration is applied to the weapon attribute, usually assigned in conjunction with the area enhancement. This means the weapon attack remains active within the affected area for a prolonged period. Examples of this type of attack include chemical clouds, sheets of fire, tear gas. Tear, tear gas is a perfect example. There you go. That tear gas is there. Maybe it's slowly spreading or maybe it's just kind of stuck in that area. But yeah, it, it hangs around for a while, right? Sheets of fire, electrical charges, or freezing vapors. If someone enters the area while the duration is still ongoing, they suffer. Huh? If someone enters the area while the duration is still going, they say, oh, okay. Uh, damage or other effects as if. <sighs> I'm going to read this in English now. If someone enters the area while the duration is still ongoing, he suffers damage or other effects as if he had been struck by the attack and will continue to suffer the effects each round until he leaves the vicinity. As a technical writer, I know it's annoying to some people, but we would have removed all this and it would have been like until the character leaves the vicinity. But, you know, uh, gaming books are written in a much more creative writing style that can annoy the crap out of me sometimes. And yes, Palladium does that as well. Uh, the, start, the starting time for durations when assigned to weapons is different than for other attributes, as noted. So if you want something to last an hour, if you want the tear gas to last an hour, Oh, actually, tear gas would be a weapon, so I guess that'd just be five rounds, okay? Um, okay, so if you want to last an hour, you'd have to put five assignments on there. Whew. That's a lot. Well, it's it's hard... It's hard to say that's the best for this. I mean, if you're talking points, yeah, if you got 200 points, then that's the best for this, but you're going to have enhancements and limiters, especially in the tri-stat system, you're going to have, it's just basic combat. You're going to have enhancements and limiters. Uh, you know, there are some people who can, will say, hmm, we're going to be playing a, uh, let me think, we're going to be playing a water-based uh, adventure on the high seas, right? So I'm going to take a lot of powers that affect water, or that, you know, Aquaman, I can fight and, and and uh, and and act and control fish or whatever underwater with these limiters, right? Sure, you you yes in that case. But if you take a bullet and I take a fireball and he takes the alien face hugger acid, you know, at range, it's really going to be the same thing, just based on the limiters and because um, because can it penetrate armor? Well, no, it can't unless you actually take that enhancement. Can it, uh, you know, is it affected? You know, can that fire be put out? Well, if you take that limiter, you know, and, and maybe I'm talking out of my ass a little bit on this because I don't know all the limiter uh, enhancements and limiters, but ultimately they're the same thing with just a different color over them. It's going to be the enhancements and limiters that uh, that really ultimately affect it. And I don't know, I played GURPS uh, back in the 90s, and I don't know, remember enough about GURPS. So. Uh, 
but I wouldn't put um, I wouldn't put GURPS in the same category. Personally, I wouldn't put GURPS in the same category as Champions or uh, I was going to call it the best or Absolute Power. But that's again, that's a personal take by me. All right, potent. Potent is usually only assigned to level one attributes. To design an attributes functionality to match a specific vision for your character, it's sometimes necessary to assign more limiters than enhancements. Doing so increases the effective level of an attribute beyond the assigned level. For example, a player might want the character to have a version of flight that requires slight concentration while flying. So one assignment of the limiter. And burns 10 energy points for every minute of use. Uh, so one assignment of the deplete limiter. An attribute with two limiters assigned functions at two levels higher than the actual attribute level. So the player would only need to purchase flight at level one to gain the benefits of the effect of flight level three to fly at 100 kilometers per hour. Okay. Is there going to be a follow-up to that? Slide over here. But, here we go. Here's the but. What if the player only wants the character to fly at a top speed of 10 kilometers per hour? Weird, but I get the point he's trying to make. Or 30 kilometers per hour. With two limiters, the slowest speed from a level 1 attribute assignment is 100 kilometers per hour because you have the level 1 plus 2 limiters, which is effective level 3 ability. I like this. This is... Boom. I, I like one of the best phrases, because it's not a full sense you know, in here. Uh, parentheticals. Because it explains every level one plus a two limiters effective level three ability. It's just perfect. Need more of that. That's where the potent enhancement comes in, which provides a more robust application of the attribute, but reigns in the effective level to match the player's intention with the character. The intended function of this limiter is why you usually only assign potent to level one attributes, unless the game master decides otherwise to reflect a specific function, as is the case with some shields. Okay. That, that makes, I don't know how often, well, actually, I guess it gets used quite a bit, but uh, that I would use it, but I get it. And if you really have a specific vision, and that is the power of these point based games making the character you want. You know, uh, you know I know chat's been talking about min maxing characters. Well, as a game master, be a man, stand up and say no. <laughs> okay? Or. Run a better game. No, how do I want to say this? Well, I'm going to say it that way, but uh, listen to the intent here. Run a better game. You should be if, if you should be able to handle any character build, and I don't like the term build, but in this case, it literally is. You should be able to uh, handle any character build in there, or put limitations. And we talked about that at the beginning, and it was it the first or second video? We talked about that. Game masters can put limitations on the number of assignments you can do, the level of powers. Uh, or uh, attributes, sorry, let me call them the right thing. Uh, uh, the stats, you can put limiters in all this. You're obviously going to have a point limiter, but even within the point limiter, you say, okay, no attribute can be higher than level five. But I have the points, doesn't matter. Or, you know, when you go beyond level five, it's getting more into the super heroic instead of the heroic, my terms, not the books. Uh, and I don't want that. So you absolutely can do that. Put those limitations on there. If necessary, if not, learn to be a good game master. And yeah, it takes experience. I'm not. I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying, learn to be a good game master. And yeah, if they come out with something that uh, that defeats your bad guy faster than you wanted, remember that. And then make the next encounter more challenging. Remember, your job as a game master is not to defeat the players. It's to put challenges in front of the player characters. Notice the language I use there. It's not your job to defeat the players. It's to put challenges in front of the player characters. You should be happy when they surpass them. And then next time, put another challenge in front of them. And that, and that challenge could be a puzzle. I hate puzzles. But it could be a puzzle. It could be combat. It could be social encounter. It could be many, many, many different things. Uh, range is a measure of how far away from the character the... Uh, Sorry, range is a measure of how far away from the character the center of an attribute can be manifested. Passive voice kills me. And should not be confused with the area enhancement. So, <clears throat> area is how big of a burst. So, you, we're talking that grenade, right? Let's use this in terms of the grenade. Range is how far you can throw it. Area is how far it goes boom. If, for whatever reason, you cannot throw it farther than it goes boom, you're caught in it, <laughs> okay? So think of it that way. Range is how far it goes out. 
areas, how far it goes, boom. And you can now do that with anything. <clears throat> uh, the attribute also has an area assigned. Characters may center the area effect on any location within the range. Without assigning the range enhancement, an attribute can only be used on the character directly or when touching a target. So, as your assignments, it's activated through touch or it's just personal to yourself. Uh, six assignments, county size range. Hmm, what if your state doesn't have counties? Has parishes? All right, moving on. All right. Targets. Targets refers... Targets refer to the maximum number of people that the attribute can affect. If targets is not assigned, the attribute usually only affects the character directly or one other person is indicated in the attribute description. So I wonder if a grenade needs this. A strict reading of just that paragraph would say, oh, a grenade not only needs area, but it also needs targets. I personally think that's wrong. I'm just saying a strict reading of it. I think that there should be another couple sentences here clarifying specifically. Yes, you need the area, or sorry, uh, maybe it'd be up here in, in, uh, in area. Where's area? There's duration, there's area. That yes, you need the targets to affect multiple targets, or no, you don't need targets to affect multiple targets. Because I don't think that the use of targets in this case is supposed to affect area. Could be wrong, but a strict reading of it says yes. I think this is more for like maybe ricochet fire, right? Or a, uh, a fireball that you throw out there that then splits into three, boom, and hits three different people. That, that's how I that's how I envision it anyway. But a strict reading of it says, well, yeah, you have the area; it goes boom, but it only affects one person because uh, you know you, you didn't take any assignments of this. That's I really, really, really believe that that is wrong. But that is what a strict reading of this would indicate. So, and again, you're the game master. You make the rulings how you want at your table. I don't actually think it's a, it's like, oh my God, this book is broken. I'm not saying it that way in any way, shape or form. I just know based on the comments that we get from everything from Palladium to other games that we cover, how people read things. I mean, Heathen Dog and I, you've seen us on many of these things. I bet you he would sit here and be like, oh, according to this, you have to have it. I would say no, but, but. Again, if you take a strict reading of it, uh, well, if I want to hit multiple targets, I'm going to have to do that, huh? All right, let's look at limiters. Limiters are restrictions. Actually, no. No, no. Before we go into limiters, I want to look at some of this chat. Because I've let a lot of you guys, I've, I've kind of kept a little eye on it, but I've missed a lot of it as well. Oh, actually trying not to watch anything. Good, got it. Sadly, many people just don't. So, I, actually, let me put this on the screen because cause this is a very valid point, if I can find it. I can't find it quickly. I'm not going to. Okay, I can't find it quick. Oh, there it is. Boom. Um, this is a valid point. Because I'm one of those people that don't put the videos up on Rumble. Here is why. It is about my process of how they even go to YouTube. I don't edit my videos. I'm sure if you're watching the live streams, you know that. What I do is because, and I wish YouTube would copy this. Hell, I wish Rumble would copy this. Uh, well, there's two. Actually, there's two reasons for Rumble. I use Twitch for one reason and one reason only. Otherwise, I would dump it like a bad habit. It has the best highlighter in the world in terms of video. I go there. I said, "This is where video starts. This is where it ends. Add another one. This is where this segment starts. This is where this segment ends. Add another one." I do that five times in Twitch. And then it automatically exports them to YouTube. Even the YouTube editor is much more of a pain in the butt th than that. Well, I can automatically export to YouTube. I can't automatically export to Rumble. I don't download them. It takes forever to download them. Those few, very few videos I've ever had to edit, I have to download them. The quality gets, gets messed up a little bit because of compression and so forth. Then I have to re-upload them. That takes forever. So... I just don't do it that way. The other issue with uh, with Rumble for me is there's no members only or subscriber only in their case content. I would love to have my live streams available to the people who are paying backers on Rumble, but it's not there yet. I'm hoping one day it is, but it's not there yet. So hopefully that explains why I don't do that. I, don't, I just don't have the time to do a lot of that extra work that it would take. And 
man youtube or rumble if you copy the twitch highlighter i would use it that quickly it's literally the only reason i stream to twitch at all i can't stand twitch so hopefully that explains a little bit um this is i'm watching legion myth good to see you here uh rpg exile projectiles are all projectiles right yeah i mean it, it took me forever to understand that in the 90s like my brain just did not want to comprehend that um uh, personally like the idea of having uh say for one quarter say for two thirds I, I get it i think i think for some people that just gets too far into the weeds but i get it it's actually kind of one of the things i do i do it more in dungeons and dragons than anywhere else they'll be like i want to i want to get from here to there like ooh, that's right on the cusp <laughs> or I want to throw my fireball at this exact spot. Well, I'm sorry, but you're not a range finder. So there's the possibility you hit your buddies in here because they're right on the edge of that thing. Because I don't believe in the whole concept that a fireball ends one inch from your nose and you get no effect from it. So what I'll do is I'll have the person either make a saving throw or a dex check or something like that. And instead of being full damage or half damage, it'll be half damage and no damage. So I get, I get what you're saying conceptually. I just don't think that people want to get into a lot of that math. Um, I already commented to you're wrong there. Uh, they can, they can lead to min maxing. I, I understand, but I think a good game master can also monitor that or just, okay, you min max. That's great. Um, are you going to be able to resolve every situation? Nope. This one's social. Great. I'm glad you min maxed your combat ability. You need to talk your way out of this one. So there are always things that can happen. Yes. And we haven't got to items yet, Psyghost, but you are correct. When we get to items in a couple weeks, whenever it is, I, I don't know what week it is. Um, yes, you are, you are correct. So in terms of champions, champions has this thing called obvious successful focus, obvious inaccessible focus. I'll just stick with those two. So an obvious successful focus is like having a firearm. It's obvious because you see me using it, and it's successful, which means you can take it from me. Now, the good news is in champions, you get a lot more points, for, you know, or it costs a lot less points for that. But then there's obvious inaccessible focus. And I guess that would be like a, a cybernetic arm that has a gun in it, right? Where you go, you know, that's just out of your arm. Or like Wolverine's claws. You, you can't just <laughs> disarm the claws, you know, right? So that's an obvious inaccessible focus. This game, it's done. It has the gear or the attributes. Now, to be fair, items are kind of like, actually, they are, to me, they are attributes. But they are treated differently in points because they have that accessibility. And I don't know if this book says it, but I know Bessem says it. It says, look, if somebody pays for an item, yes, it costs half the points. But don't be a jerk and take it from them all the time because the player did still spend points on that. If you take it from them, it should be, there should be a meaningful reason for it. And the player should get it back or should get the points back. If you're going to make it, you know, permanent or, you know, Haha, uh -huh, I took this from you and you're never going to get to use it. Well, then what was the point of doing that, right? Uh, cookie cutter characters. I, I didn't see that in Champions. Again, I only played GURPS one time. I can't, I can't speak to that. Uh, I see it more in class-based games like Dungeons & Dragons when you use point-by systems than, than anything else. But, you know, your mileage may vary on that one. You know, again, that's anecdotal experience on my part. Um, unfortunately, I don't do damage reduction. Is this for absolute power? So that might be one of the types of limiters that you could add into the game on your own. I know some people have some uh, heartburn with uh, Palladium on that as well. And I'm just like, it's a cinematic game. I'm not saying I don't want it there. I don't. I don't have a necessarily an issue with that. But uh, you know, maybe something like a, a conical fire weapon, like like the Romulan plasma, right? Does a whole ton of damage up front. But uh, but if you can get away from it as it disperses, it just does a lot less damage. Yeah, I think there should be a form of weapon like that. Um. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, not going to keep reading all of those. Okay. A lot of good commentary out there. I just don't want to get hung up on it. So, uh...
So, all right, we're we're going to move on. I I I get what you guys are saying. I think there's a good back and forth with some of you. You know, making your explanations out there, good stuff. But it is time to move on. <clears throat> Limiters are restrictions on the scope of an attribute that reduce its functionality or make it more difficult to use while increasing its effective level. Remember, this is you're now you're putting limits on it, you're making it narrower, but because it's narrower, it's become that sword's becoming longer, it does a little more damage. Uh, it's probably a bad example, but whatever. <clears throat> For example, if your mind control attribute is a magical invocation that requires several seconds worth of chanting to cast, this is a limiter. Yeah, you're not just going boop, boop. You're going humana, 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 abracadabra. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely a limiter because somebody can shut you up in the middle of that, right? Or hear it coming and maybe dive out of the way. Because you know, did it say line of sight? Um, it requires several seconds. No, it doesn't say anything about line of sight, but just say, Gargo, say you had to line of sight and he dies behind cover. Well, now you're not brain foogling him. Uh, you do not usually apply limiters directly to the companion or item attributes, but you can apply limiters to individual attributes that are assigned to the companion or item, something we will talk about later uh, in different video. And here are the different limiters you can throw on there. Again, if you want to see the entire list, go ahead and pause it. But I am moving on. And we are not reading all of these. Let's, um, what's emotional? Let's let's read emotional limiter, and then we'll think a delay. Delay is going to be kind of a common one. I think charge is another common one. Yeah, we'll do charges, delay, and emotional just just to get an idea of what they are. Uh, charges and delay because I think they're common and emotional. I just I have an idea, but I really want to know what what it has to say. So charges, delay, and emotional charges. The character can only use a specific attribute occasionally. This may result from a need to recharge the attribute or device, an incredible drain in the character's internal reserves, a depletion of fuel for a vehicle, or different form of limitation. Charges are normally applied to attributes with instantaneous effects such as jumping or teleport, those that have a finite duration per use. The recovery limiter is usually assigned to the attributes with ongoing effects such as armor or flight. So. One assignment, you can only use it four to six times per day. Two assignments, two or three times per day. And three assignments, you can only use it once a day or once per session. So, you know, one trick pony or boom, done. But it's probably a pretty cool power if you can only use it once per day. They got concentration. That would be for things like, you know, spells. There's backlash. Uh, there's, there's delay. The attribute does not take effect immediately after its use, but rather activates sometime later. D&D, &D, delayed blast fireball, or you throw that grenade, right? Well, delayed blast grenade, right? <clears throat> and, you know, you don't want it to blow up in your hands, so you throw it and you wait, tick, 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 tick. But this is, this would be more like a ticking time bomb. I guess, yeah, I shouldn't have used those examples because those are still pretty immediate. This would be more like a ticking time bomb. You set it for a time and then you get the heck out of there. Get, get out of Dodge. So uh, this latency period, period may provide the targets or other characters time to nullify or otherwise avoid the attribute's effect. For example, if a young boy is bitten by a parasitic alien and will soon join the alien's brood, his parents may still have time to take him to the hospital for emergency surgery. Okay. So one assignment, delay a few minutes. Two assignments delay a few hours. Three assignments delay a few days. And I think that a, an illness is a perfect example of this. You know, when you're exposed to an illness, you don't all of a sudden five seconds later start, you know, coughing and and sweating and and going into you know fits or hives or whatever. You know, it might take 24 hours for it to incubate. So, and then what was what well, we said emotional? Well, I said emotional. Whatever. Um, the attribute only manifests. In situations where the character is experiencing a strong emotional trigger, this is the Incredible Hulk. Won't like me when I'm angry. For example, a metahuman with this limiter might only be able to use the healing attribute on someone with whom the character has a strong emotional tie. You can only heal your buddies. Similarly, a weapon may only function if the character was striking to avenge a loved one, reverse humiliation, or rescue a teammate, or save the world. Assignment. So attribute uses uh, so requires significant emotional investment, strong emotional investment, extreme emotional investment. So you can only use it when you can only use the power when trying to save your wife and kids. So. 
And you can see the other ones here. We're not going to read through them all, but you get the idea of how these limiters work. Boom, 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 boom. And there are a bunch of them. And yeah, feel free, you know, if you really think that the range limiter is necessary for like lesser damage or whatever, add it, add it to your game. So the next video is going to be on character defects. You can see that uh, title there. Uh, is this a long chapter or not? It is. Ooh, actually, it looks pretty long. Let's take a look real quickly. Is it a lot of words or just a lot of, oh no, a lot of defects. Okay, and we'll look over a few of those defects. It's really not a lot of words, just a lot, a lot of defects. So we'll look at three, four, five of them, whatever makes sense for us. Cool. Let's uh, stop presenting that there and see what you guys have to say. Anything else on there? Um, and nothing that I didn't already address that really... Saigo says he knows the game well, but unfortunately has to take off and be a driver for, hey, real life comes first. Appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. If you don't hear this now, maybe you'll watch it on the video later. But, uh, you know, thanks for hanging out as long as you could. And, all right, so I guess I addressed everything before this. So, again, I, I appreciate your commentary in there, and I understand your perspectives on this stuff. Uh, like, the min-maxing thing, I just don't think it's as big of an issue in a game like Champions or Besom or Absolute Power, and maybe I should say Hero System instead of Champions, because Champions is just one aspect of it, as, say, I won't talk about GURPS, because I just don't know enough about it, but a game... Uh, look, I'll even argue Earth Dawn, but there's a very specific reason why is that there. Or Dungeons and Dragons, where it's class based. I think in a class based game, I'm much more apt to agree that uh, that particular power, especially with how the feats work there, particular powers build, so to speak, really can. And I'm basing this on experience as well. It can be much more problematic than say a game like this, but Again, I'm sure you can talk about experiences and where you feel that happens. So, with that said, that is uh, that is our discussion on limiters and enhancements. I uh, I know we talked about it quite a bit in a previous video, but this really dove into it more. I hopefully hopefully now you really understand them. I think I do. Hopefully, I'm explaining them correctly. I don't know if Mark watches these videos at all. Uh, I, I know he watched some of our best ones. But uh, you know he's a busy guy. But uh, you know if I'm if I got something wrong, he might let me know. <laughs> so, you know but uh, but I but I hope we're on this again. I one of the things I want to say is I don't play superhero games, so I'm not out there going. Got to get the game. Got to get the game. Got to get the game. But a Mark's been cool with us. We've give, done some giveaways that included Bessem. I think we did. We give away Absolute Power. Uh, and and if you're looking for something that's superhero oriented, I know the Palladium guys are going to be. And by Palladium, I don't mean Kevin and Sean. I mean the Palladium fans can be angry for me saying this. No, you should tell them Heroes Unlimited. <clears throat> okay, Heroes Unlimited has a style to it, yeah. But if you're looking for something that's more, you make what you want, and here are the points to do it. <clears throat> You can't go wrong with this. And I would say that personally, this is no knock on hero system or champions. I would rather do Bessem or absolute power than champions personally, because I understand the math better. Number one and number two, tri stat system is just a little easier to run. Uh, you know, so uh, I, I'm, I'm appreciating the game. I'm liking the game. Is it perfect? Nope. <laughs> you know, but, uh, but no game is, is perfect you cannot make a perfect game i've said this before i'll say it again and then we'll end the 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 video here <clears throat> i've seen a rule book for a game that is over five thousand pages you know and if you're on the discord or something want to ask me what game that is i can tell you and send you a link to it five thousand pages and it's still not perfect it's been worked on since 1983, if I remember correctly. It does a dang good job of doing certain simulations, but it's not perfect. And it can't be, because the human brain is weird. And when you get a bunch of human brains together, well... So, I don't want a 5,000-page rule book for a role-playing game, personally. And one of the things I appreciate about Absolute Power, and I appreciate about Bessem, and I appreciate about the Palladium games is... This isn't true for every game out there, but it's definitely true for those games. Yes, it takes a while to make a character, but then everything's right there. 
I don't necessarily have to go reference the game book again. Unless we're trying to get this real nuanced clarity. It's right there in the character sheet. I'm ready to play the game. <clears throat> I don't have to go looking everything up. So I appreciate games like this. Um, all right. So with that, um, my, as you can tell, I'm kind of losing my voice. I'm going to take a drink in between videos here. Please like, subscribe, and share. Heathen Dog will be back again with us next week. Uh, next week, there will not be any absolute power coverage because Kevin and Sean from Palladium Books are coming back. and We're going to have Gamer Talk number two where we're going to talk about magic, psionics, superpowers, super abilities, ley lines, all that good old magical and mystical stuff from the Palladium system. And they're going to be coming on and talking about that. So we'll be back in two weeks to talk about... Uh, what are we talking about in two weeks? Whatever chapter eight is. <laughs> so yep. So, uh, chapter eight. <laughs> there we go. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the next video on defects.